stem cells, they have cell regenerative capacity, so they have a great role in regenerative medicine also. Uh, what is regenerative medicine? It deals with replacing, engineering, uh, or regenerating human or animal cells or tissues and organs to reestablish normal function of the body. Plastic surgery and regenerative medicine share the same principle. They use this patient's own tissues to restore and enhance the body. So which type of stem cell can we use? There are several sorts of stem cells available. So we have embryonic stem cells, we have adult stem cells, we have induced pluripotent stem cells which we produce in the laboratory environment. We have perinatal stem cells, which Dr. Sylvia talked about, umbilical cord, and we have cancer stem cells. So as you see, the egg is fertilized here, the totipotent stem cells, totipotent stem cells get transformed into anything in the body. This is the form of embryo and placenta. This is as you see, and pluripotent cells. Only they can uh, produce embryo, not the environments of the extra embryo structures. So we can create embryonal stem cells with, the, uh, with these cells. And here comes another. This is the cells and adult stem cells that we use in generally in uh, restoring body functions. Embryonic stem cells, they have a huge potential in the field of tissue engineering, uh, but they have some drawbacks, some ethical tissues, because we kill embryo to take these cells, so we cannot use them uh, on regenerative medicine. Only we can use adult stem cells. They have a limited use, as, as I mentioned. Adult stem cells, is it stem cell types as we use them generally uh, in healthy humans? Adult stem cells produce new stem cells as we need it. And we have lots of types of stem cells, mesenchymal stromal cells. They create connective tissue. They can transform into connective tissue, bones, and cartilage. We have hematopoietic stem cells that transform into blood cells. We have neural stem cells that transform the central cells of the nervous system. And we can isolate mesenchymal stem cells from developed tissues. They are multipotent. Uh, they are very useful cell population in regenerative medicine. And they are relatively easy to isolate. Uh, they have a multi-origin differentiation. And uh, we can, there are multiple sources for harvest of mesenchymal stem cells. We can take mesenchymal stem cells from bone marrow, adipocytes from our fat tissue, from our skin and from our skeletal muscles. We can isolate them anywhere. But the adipose tissue and the bone marrow is the easy to isolate and use in the clinical practice. <coughs> bone marrow stem cells were the first mesenchymal stem cell types identified. So they have a lots of scientific studies about it. Uh, but adipose tissue type stem cells uh, oh, sorry. They are adipose, adipose stem cells. They are more genetically and morphologically stable in long-term culture. They have lots of advantages uh, in comparison with the bone marrow stem cells. They display a lower ratio and so show a higher proliferative capacity. So. Uh, they retain differentiation differenti potential for longer period in the culture compared with the bone marrow stem cells. Uh, bone marrow stem cells is only used in plastic surgery, it's mostly used on one therapy, but we mostly use adipose tissue drive stem cells in plastic surgery. Yeah, they have a similar differenti differentiation potential to other type of mesenchymal stem cells. They have a, 
uh, high yield of isolation rate in comparison with the bone marrow stem cells. Uh, they have a lot of potential, as you're going to see later. For a plastic surgeon, by the way, because the fat tissue is an easy accessible tissue, so during many routine procedures, they can be easily and repeatedly obtained by lipectomy while we are doing liposuction in the surgery. What's happening? Uh, so over 400,000 liposuction surgeries are performed in USA in each year. So we can use this valuable tissue to just create the stem cells that we are SCF, uh, which is called stromal vascular fraction, is a component of lipoaspirate which we uh, take from adipose tissue. So we create the SPF. SCF is the valuable component of the, uh, which contains stem cells. So uh, in 2001, Zuck et al. just discovered the SPF uh, during processing with collagenous, collagenous in adipose tissue. They found a large number of cells, which is known. They tell as stromal vascular function. Uh, in this SVF, there is stem cell precursors, such as adipose tissue-derived stem cells and mesenchymal and anterior pro progenitor cells. This is the valuable part of the, uh, which is contained, valuable part of the adipose tissue which contains stem cells. So what is the benefits of SVF? So it's, uh, it contains endothelial progenitor cells and adipose tissue-derived stem cells. Uh, it has beneficial effects when it's transplanted in the radiation-damaged tissue. It just improves angiogenesis and neovascularization when injected on healthy tissues. So in most therapeutic studies, we see uh, when we inject SPF to the side of the wound, we see initial reduction in inflammatory immune response. When we apply the SPF to the specific disease models, it also tends to reduce inflammatory cytokines and growth factors. It has a huge regenerative potential. And when we inject it into diabetic food patients, uh, we see nerve regeneration and fibroblast pro proliferation when we inject it. So why we are... Uh, Imagine uh, why we are uh, just giving the whole adipose tissue to the patient, but so why we bother to take the, and create the SPF. Imagine we are on a diet, so we have a pasta with cheese and meat. The only product we are allowed to eat on the diet is the meat. So we, we want the SPF, we want the volume portion. So what we need to separate the meat from cheese and pasta. Uh, the end product of the SPF is not the naturally occurring substance in the fat tissue, in the adipose tissue. So. Uh, Although these stem cells are present in the adipose tissue, they are not co-located, they are dispersed. So what we are going to do, we are going to create the SPF with some kind of uh, enzyme treatment. So, so where we can take fat? We can take fat from any region. So this is, I'm doing some taking fat from a patient. First, I'm injecting local anesthetic solution so in order to prevent bleeding from the patient. Uh, this is the solution I use normally, it's, which is called client solution. It's ingredients I just wrote it before, but I so, sometimes modify the solution according to the patient weight. This is the cannulas I routinely use for taking fat. The upper two one I use to take fat. The lower one I use to just give the tumor some fluid to the patient. So have, they have a different diameter. The below one is much more thinner. The upper two ones much more thicker. This is how I'm doing. This is a small video that I'm taking fat from the patient. This is the local anesthetic solution. I'm taking it. And I'm injecting local anesthetic to the patient. 
my incision is going to be the, in the umbilical region. It's going to be hidden. You can easily use it, do it on the local anesthesia. And after I anesthetize the patient, now I'm taking the fat, as you see, the fat tissue. It's a relatively easy procedure and comfortable. So this is our lab in the clinic. After we take the fat, we add 40 milliliters of ring yellow lactate to the fat and just shake for 10 minutes in the shaker. And after that, we put it in centrifuge device. The preparation period usually lasts for about just for 40 minutes and 45 minutes. So the patient will rest while she's waiting for the preparation period. She can drink some coffee. Now, below is the SPF portion. We take it and then we put it in, a, in another vial. There's a filter on this vial below it, so we shake it again, and after that, you will see. After that, we drain the excess water. Okay. Yeah, we drain it. There's a filter below in this vial, so as you can see, this is the SPF. I'm injecting to the patient for skin rejuvenation, so for anti-aging purposes. So, oh, pop, 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 Okay. Uh -huh. This is another region that I'm taking fat. You can take fat from anywhere. Woman always wants to take fat from different regions, so this patient has a fat accumulation here, so she wants me to take fat from this region, so this is another type of example. So just giving the tumor some fluid to make the pain management. Of course, I'm taking from the both sides because you cannot take fat from just only one leg. It creates an asymmetry. Now I'm taking fat. This is the Dharma, ro Dharma roller. Uh, first I create a, first I do Dharma roller for uh, the skin to be ready. And then I'm injecting the SPF right now. Relatively easy to do on, on the local anesthesia. Okay. And bone marrow stem cell, I'm not using it too frequently, but I use it on one patients. Uh, it's relatively easy to do in comparison with the adipose tissue harvest. So we can take uh, bone marrow stem cells from anterior superior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine, and tibia. It's uh, really good for wound management and uh, the open wounds. Also, we have exosomes. In recent years, exosomes have gained attention as a strategy for accessing the therapeutic effects and cells without risk of complications for taking fat or taking bone marrow stem cells. There are more than 25,000 scientific studies published so far. So they are small vesicles. So they found nearly all cell fluids in the body. So they are relatively easy to do. They have been found and secreted by most cell types, including immune cells, and neuronal cells, epithelial cells, endothelial cells, embryonic cells, all cells, and also plants secrete exosomes to communicate between each cells, each other. So they have a lot of potential in the future. Uh, 
Several studies, by the way, indicate that exosomes secreted by mesenchymal stem cells can replace the mesenchymal stem cell-based stem cell treatment, cell therapies, and various injury in disease models in the future. So exosomes is the future, I think. So I'm going to show you some examples about my cases and where, where, where we can use in plastic surgery uh, stem cells and exosomes. We can use stem cells in soft tissue augmentation and regeneration. Uh, the most commonly used method for us to uh, volumetric augmentation of soft tissues is fat graft. So uh, there is a variable rate of persistence after fat graft. What we can do, uh, it's difficult to keep the fat graft permanent at an optimum level. So SPF, which creates a neovascularization, so it increase when we do fat graft with SPF, we increase the graft permanence. So the, uh, the fat grafts will be born permanent after the procedure. And we see decrease in side effects such as fibrosis and kiss formation of fat grafts also. So this is 70 years old, 72 years old woman. I just only did one session of fat graft and SPF injection. Uh, I did nothing also. This is two months after the procedure. So she have a loss of... This is also 74 years old woman. I did blepharoplasty also. And also SPF injection and fat graft. Yeah, the photos are different, but she is happy. This is three months later. Okay, sorry. It's stuck. This is, oh, okay. this is 60 years old woman. I, I did blepharoplasty, fat graft, and then just a little bit chin filler before, the, before this photo. So this is three months after the uh, procedures. This is a 38 years old woman. She burned while she was a child and three years old. Uh, I did. This is the scar that she has. Do we, do we have a laser or something with that? Laser? No, you don't. Okay. This is her scar. She burned when she was three years old. Uh, we did carbon dioxide laser and stem cell treatment and skin spray and fat grafting also, the combined procedure in the operating room. So I take the fat from the sides, so she, she doesn't happy with the side fats that she has. So this, this is just right after the procedure. She will be much more happy and it will be much more good. I just open the dressings also. This is an early period. She'll be better in the future. So we can use stem cells for skin rejuvenation also. By aging, there's a decreased production of collagen in the skin. So while we are using the ADSCs, we can just increase fibroblast proliferation and skin rejuvenation by anti-aging purposes. So this is after acne treatment. I uh, did carbon dioxide laser and two sessions of stem cells to this patient. We can see good results after we do consecutive sessions, by the way. This is another patient. This patient, I did one session of stem cell. This is three months after the procedure. We can also use stem cells uh, in treatment of vitiligo and hypopigmented scars. This is the combination of phototherapy and stem cell treatment. The left one we use phototherapy also, the right one we use phototherapy also. So uh, in the treatment of vitiligo and hypopigmented scar, we can use stem cells also. This is a 22 years old woman patient, uh, which is hurt after gas explosion. She had multiple injuries. She has a frozen neck, so what we did, we did lots of surgical procedures, Z-plasties, uh, also fat grafts and stem cell injections more than three times. And this is her after loss of physiotherapy, by the way, after three years of, well, after we start the treatment of, with the stem cells. 
This is an 11-year-old male patient who is suffering after explosion. This is a difficult case also. She, he has a frozen neck, by the way. She cannot, he cannot just move his neck. After multiple procedures, skin grafts, and also eyebrow transplantation, this is what, what we can do best about him. This is another patient, 37 years old woman, suffering from chickenpox infection after scar, uh, uh, scar after chickenpox infection. So this is what we can do after two sessions of carbon dioxide laser treatment and stem cell therapy. Also, we can use stem cells on wound healing also, also bone marrow stem cells we can use. Uh, uh, adipose tissue drive stem cells have critical importance for wound healing. As I mentioned before, they have numerous growth factors and cytokines. They increase microphage migration and granulation tissue. They increase vascularization, so they help wound healing a lot. <coughs> they have a lots of angiogenetic properties. They, they are useful in limp ischemia and diabetic food patients, for example, burger, burger's disease and diabetic food patients. When we applied stem cells on the ischemic limbs, we see new collateral vessel formations uh, after in the angiographic imaging procedures. This is a 72 years old, 72 years old male patient, which we did inject stem cells two sessions. So, as we can see, there is lots of collateral vessel formation after six months after the injection. So. Uh, also, we can use stem cells to prevent pathological wound healing also. Uh, scar formation is the associated with the inflammatory process of the wound healing. So by using adipose tissue drive stem cells, uh, we can improve wound color and elasticity. This is 20 years old male patient which, is, which suffered from acid burn. So we did three sessions of stem cells with this patient also. We did tissue. Uh, skin grafts also. This is two years after the procedure. This is him. This is two years old male patient suffering from flame burn, bad case. But what we can do, we can just uh, take the, that skin on his forehead, just do skin grafts. This is what we can achieve after one year. Also, we can, as you can see, uh, for the diabetic food patients, this is two sessions of stem cell treatment on the left patient and just one session of stem cell treatment on the right, patient on the right. This is a 77 years old male patient which is suffering from pressure sore. So we did just one session of stem cell treatment and injected to this side. As you can see, it's much more smaller right now. This is a 60C. Six to six years old male patient suffering from diabetic food. Only two sessions of stem cell and proper diabetic food care, what we can achieve. This is 31 years old male patient. He's paraplegic, so after a motorbike accident, he's suffering from a atonic wound. As you can see, there's a wound in his ischial. He has an ischial pressure sore. So what I did, I did a flap to close this one, to close this one. So. After the operation, the wand is opened again. Sometimes uh, this one's a little uh, just uh, too hard to just close it at one time. So what we did in the second session, I did a small surgical procedure that I combined stem cells also. This is him after two months. Also, we can use stem cells for hair regeneration. Uh, of course, I'm not talk talking about the hair transplant, but we can uh, with using adipose tissue drive stem cells. So uh, we can activate surrounding tissues via cytokines. Cytokines, they secrete, they have uh, beneficial paracrine effects on hair and its paracrine function is the most important therapeutic effect of stem cells. So as you can see, 42 year, 43 years old male patient, 
of course, it's not a hair transplant, but also it's effect, as we can see, the patient is happy. Just only two sessions of SPF. Uh, also, we can use stem cells for peripheral nerve regeneration. Uh, in peripheral nerve injuries, we see a lot of donor side morbidity while we using the surgery and suboptimal function recoveries by using adipose tissue drive cells and bone marrow stem cells. They can translate, they can transform into Schwann-like cells, so it's they have beneficial effects on neural degeneration. So this is a 50 years old woman patient which is suffering from facial paralysis after brain tumor. This is what we can achieve after one session of stem cell and Botox treatment and fat grafts also. This is a different case I joined in one year ago. Uh, this is a one of a lifetime experience for me. I just want to share it with you. This is a conjoint twin case that I, uh, we did, we planned it for just one year, as you can see. We did two sessions. First, we placed and uh, expander devices, three expanders to these babies. As you can see, the expanders are fully inflated. <coughs> this is the 3D printed base of this child, but they can use it like that. Oh, okay. And this is after we separated on the two sessions. This is a one of a lifetime experience for me too. That's why I wanted to share with you. So this is the team that were responsible for this big operation. So it just takes, the second session just takes nine hours. It's the shortest time for skin, for this ch ch child split. So this is me. And uh, to close up, uh, the paths of plastic surgery and regenerative medicine will intersect even more in the future. Uh, maybe in the future, this is a 4D printer, so we can, by using these devices, we can use, we can create our own organs and organize in the future. So there's a big future waiting for us. This is the team, this is my core team, and this is my big team. We are still growing, by the way, every day. Thank you.